This was genuinely one of the most stressful scenarios that I've ever found myself in in my entire life. And out of all of the places for it to happen, it happens in front of a thousand people supporting animals as leaders in Brisbane, Australia. So the tour is finished now. It finished about two weeks ago and people have been asking me since I came back, you know, like, how was it? What were the best moments? What were the most stressful moments? What was the worst thing about the tour? And this is by far the absolute worst thing that happened on the entire run. And Truthfully, I don't even know if the crowd knew it at the time. Luckily for me, I was filming the entire thing and I can go back and visually see the stress levels that were happening in that moment. And now that it's been a couple weeks, I am finally in a good place where I can relive that moment and share it with you guys because I think it's important to show you how quickly things can change and how you need to be ready to think on your feet, especially on tour. So let's go back from the start. It's the 21st of April, it's a Friday, we're playing in Brisbane, it's the last show of the tour supporting animals as leaders. Very standard procedure as it was the other days, you know, we rock up to the venue, we start setting up, then animals rock up, they do their sound check, then we do our sound check, then we play, then they play. Very standard. We're playing in Princess theatre which is an absolutely gorgeous venue I loved every single part of it I love the way the stage looked from the crowd I love the way the crowd looked from the stage the green room access the backstage area stage access everything was absolutely perfect about that whole venue the venue staff especially and everyone involved was extremely accommodating and I feel like that's something I need to mention because it seems like these days that is mostly not the case for some venues. But any little query that we had, the venue were more than happy to kind of accommodate us in any way they could. And I thought that was really nice, especially since, you know, we're just the support act, we're not Animals as Leaders. So we set up as much as we could before our sound check started. Obviously, Animals as Leaders get their sound check first. So, you know, I was watching that and I was loving every moment of it as I was for the whole tour. And then it was our turn to sound check. So Animals as Leaders get off the stage, we sound check. And just as it was every night, it was absolutely perfect. No issues with any of our gear no issues with the rack and our ear mixes or anything like that nothing happened that was out of the ordinary and nothing happened that we needed to fix everything was running pretty much perfectly as we completely expected it to and then just the same as every other night when our sound check finishes that's when we need to stop making noise and doors open and people start getting let in and then 20 30 minutes later we're on the stage playing. So again, very standard, we finish sound check and we go downstairs, get dressed, you know, have a drink of water, start getting all our stuff ready, start putting our wireless packs on us, start putting our ears underneath our shirts, all that stuff, getting ready to play the show. I'm a little bit of a stress head with shows I've come to find, and I'm sure that anyone that's worked with me now has kind of seen that firsthand. I just want everything to be working, um, which is why every single night on that tour, and this night was no different, about five minutes before we stepped on, I would come on the stage, and I would just quickly do a line check just to make sure that our front of house engineer, um, Chris, was hearing and seeing all the meters go up whenever I would play my guitar or Connor would play his bass, just to make sure that it is actually hitting front of house before we start, just in case anything happened between the end of our sound check and when we start. And I noticed that as we were checking it in that couple minutes, um, Kynan's bass tone was cutting in and out. It almost seemed like his battery in the bass was dying or something like that. But it wasn't that because it was a fresh battery. That was not the case at all. Um, it just, I don't know, it was cutting out, it was sounding weird. And straight away, Chris just suggested, forget the wirelesses, just run wired, run kind and straight into his pedal board with a cable instead of running the wireless pack. This is about a couple minutes before we're about to go on and it was an easy enough fix. So I wasn't really that stressed and I found it a little bit weird that it might've been the wireless and we now know that it wasn't. We've never had a problem with those boss wireless systems and now we know it wasn't because of what happened after. So then he grabs a lead and plugs directly into his pedal board that includes you know, his tuner which then goes to my quad cortex and he plugged his bass in and we can hear it perfectly fine everything is great um, and we're cool we're about to start the show in two minutes let's go off stage let's dim the lights let's go and that's exactly what we did we got off stage we got the count in in our ears and we could hear Chris from the front of house desk kind of say to us all right guys let's go we went out track start rolling I'm feeling good crowds feeling good Kynan's feeling good Steven's feeling good we play I play my intro, the clean intro, and this is an intro to my song, Arrhythmia. This intro isn't in the actual song, but we add it in a live context just to kind of prime up the show. And then as the first note hits where everyone's meant to come in, there's no bass. And we have 
no idea why. I'm now choosing this exact moment to interrupt the story by letting you guys know that we have merch from this tour available. If you don't already know, touring is very expensive and merch is pretty much the number one way that bands survive. I have a bunch of different designs and colors exclusive to this run and there's some leftovers still available on the web store. If you guys wanna see what sizes are left, definitely feel free to check it out. It does help us a lot. If you guys are thinking about picking one up but you're on the fence, just know that these aren't your typical merch shirts like Gildan shirts that will die two times in the wash. Um, these are some of the highest quality shirt blanks that money can buy as merch. And I hope that if you do decide to pick it up, it lasts you for a very, very, very long time because I want merch to actually be good. You can grab all of that stuff in the description below. You can grab tabs, stems, newer DSP presets, merch, affiliate links, any ways to support us is all down in the description below. Thank you so much for your support. Let's get back to the story. Everything was working absolutely fine about 30 seconds before that first note was meant to be played. And now for some reason, there was no bass tone in our ears at all. And it's very obvious straight away because the mix just completely falls apart without the bass in there. And I'm playing and I'm looking over to Kynan and he's looking back at me. Straight away, he knows something is wrong. I know something is wrong. And without a doubt, our front of house engineer, Chris, knows something is wrong as well. Whether anyone in the crowd knew that something was wrong, I honestly like to believe that they didn't. And the only reason why they might've thought something was amiss was because Kynan was running back to the quad cortex and getting any quick moment that he could to check something or check his pedals or something like that. I, I really believe that if he just kept playing, everyone would be none the wiser and no one would even know if the bass was there or not. But to us and to Chris, our front of house engineer and you know any other audio guys that were in the room, it would have been extremely obvious. And eventually after trying to find a fix at his pedals, he has no idea why it's not working. Everything is connected. Um, his cable was connected to his pedals, which is connected to our quad cortex. He should be hearing himself and he's not. And after a certain amount of time, he just accepts defeat and just starts playing even though he can't hear himself and the front of house can't hear him either. So after that, if you were watching us and had no idea that anything was happening, you'd probably just assume that everything was going absolutely fine. But for two whole songs, I've never been that stressed in my entire life. Usually I'm worried about, you know, performing, moving around on stage, um, trying to like make the most of the space while also, you know, trying to play the parts properly. I just went onto autopilot mode for the next two songs for the whole of Arrhythmia and the Beat It cover. I was just, I can't remember my hands moving in those minutes at all. All I could think about for those two whole songs was how do I get Kynan's bass tone into the front of house. So as I'm playing all these riffs and everything, it's pure muscle memory at this point. My brain is full cylinders firing on just how can I fix this? I'm looking back at the quad cortex as I'm playing and trying to make it seem as if I'm just performing, but really I'm like looking back at the quad cortex to see what's going on. That was completely fine. There was no issues there. Then at one point, I think it was in beta or something like me and Kynan switched spots. So we walked across the stage and I was now over his pedal board. And again, it probably looked like I was playing and performing because I was, I still was playing. We were still playing the song, but in reality, I was just looking down at Kynan's pedal board just to see what the hell is going on and can I fix this? And then towards the end of beta, as we were playing, as we were finishing the song up, the fix finally came to me as we were playing. I decided to completely bypass Kynan's pedal board entirely and just plug him directly into the quad cortex. So his bass straight into the quad cortex, no tuner pedal, no wireless, no nothing, just straight into the quad cortex and hopefully that should fix everything. So right after beta ends, there's literally half a bar of space before the next song starts and we have about 30 seconds before the song kicks in entirely. So I didn't play the clean intro for that song, but no one would have been none the wiser because that song isn't an actual release song. And if you were to know my discography, you wouldn't know that there needs to be notes in that part of the song or me playing. So. We let the synths roll in the back as if it was like a transition. Straight away after beta ended, I went straight down to the QC and got to work. So again, me being super cautious about everything, I always have a spare guitar lead next to me, next to the quad cortex, just in case my wireless decides to cark it, which it never has, but again, just as a fail safe anyway, just in case it does, I have a cable there. So I can, worst case scenario, plug my guitar directly into the quad cortex and still finish the show. Luckily, I had that cable there next to me because I took Kynan's cable out straight away. So I took his lead out from input two. I grabbed my spare cable, plugged one end into input two, 
and then I grabbed the other end and then left it on the stage. And it was halfway through this process that I remembered that, oh my God, Kiner's not gonna be able to tune his bass. He's using a Dingwall for the entire set and it's set in a drop tuning for the entire set apart from one song and that song is white. That song is tuned in F, A, C, G. It's an alternate tuning. I just realized that me plugging him directly into the quad cortex, he does not have access to a tuner. He will not be able to tune to white before that song starts. And if he doesn't, it's almost impossible to play that song. So as I'm getting the cable ready, I remember this and then in that intermission and keeping in mind this is all within about a 20 30 second time span where the songs tracks are rolling we haven't stopped the laptop tracks are rolling there's a thousand people watching us and all i can think about is how to fix this issue so i plugged him directly in and then as i remember that he can't tune i held down the tuner on the quad cortex which again feels like an eternity especially in that scenario neural dsp if you're watching please make that tuner accessible by one click. Please don't make me hold it for three seconds because that was the most stressful three seconds of my entire life. The tuner loads up and I changed the input of the tuner from my input, which is input one, to now input two. So Kynan can now tune in between songs on the quad cortex. We have about 10 seconds left until the song starts. I run over to the other side of the stage and I yell in his ear because he's got ears and he can barely hear me. I yelled at him, grab the cable on the floor next to the quad cortex. And I don't think he heard me say next to the quad cortex. So then he starts looking down at his pedal board for a free cable. And then I realized that he was looking there and he couldn't find it, obviously, because it's on my side of the stage. So I grabbed him by his shirt, um, pulled him over to my side of the stage, gave him the cable and then as I gave it to him, there was about half a second for me to pry myself up to play the first note of the next song. And then we played it and then everything was fine. Kynan was going through front of house, bass was going through front of house. I was playing, Steven was playing. And then in that moment, we all clocked that everything was working and we all looked at each other and went like, yes, let's go. And then that was the moment where we just decided, F it, this is the last show. We're playing with animals as leaders like let's go we just fix this on the fly tracks rolling a thousand people watching us who knows if they even knew what happened but it's fixed now let's go and that was actually one of the most enjoyable shows of the whole run that 10 minutes was the most stressful 10 minutes of my entire life after that when i knew everything was working and we clocked the fact that you know this isn't going to happen after this show we just went all right let's do it let's let's end this show on a high let's end this tour on a high and I think it's actually one of the best we've played together as a unit, as a band, um, even though all those things happened. So yeah, that is the worst thing that happened when touring with Animals as Leaders. Apart from that, everything went absolutely splendid and I cannot wait to do it all again with I Built the Sky in June. If you guys liked actively living through the stress that I went through on that night, Definitely give this video a like and send it to a friend if you think they'd enjoy it too. If you guys want to see more stuff like this, definitely think about subscribing. And if you want to support me directly, you can check out things like my Patreon, affiliate links, merch, tabs, all that stuff will be down in the description below. Massive thank you to anyone that came out to any of those shows. We had an absolute blast and there is more content coming around that whole tour. So I can't wait to show you guys that. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you to all my Patreons. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.